so what happened for me was um, I had a cold about two or three weeks ago. I went to see the doctor, gave me some meds, seemed to get better. Um, at the weekend, um, four or five days ago, I got a fever, um, went back to the doctor, um, and then I, uh, I got some more meds and that got better. And then after a while, I realized I'd lost my sense of smell. Uh, I'd noticed online there were these reports saying that COVID-19 seems to be associated with a, a loss of smell for some people. So I could taste sweet and sour on my tongue, but I couldn't smell even like an orange. If I peeled an orange <coughs> or blue cheese, I just couldn't smell that. So I went back to the doctor and told him that, and um, that's what triggered a referral to go and get tested. <laughs> kind of do experiments on you, you know, and kind of give you food. <laughs> and, they're, and they're very pleasant, but you don't know what's happening. And then they go away. And it was like that for about five days. I have an ordinary hospital bed. Um, I have a machine that goes beep. Um, and uh, over here, I've got this sort of double airlock system on the doors. I think there's pressure, reduced pressure in here, so air comes in, I think, to keep the germs in. Um, so that means that whenever the staff come in, they suit up in a one-time use sort of plastic bunny suit. Um, and, um, and when they come through the doors, it makes the noise a bit like Star Trek. There's this sort of pssst noise. So it's a bit like being visited by friendly aliens. Every, um, every four hours or so, they come in and do my vital signs and stuff. It just seems incredible. We, we believe that we are so powerful with our technology, but actually a thing that's one five hundredth the width of a human hair can bring the world crashing to a halt with as big a disaster as World War II. How extraordinary is that? It's humbling, isn't it? We've got used to a world where technology supports everything that's important to us. If I couldn't speak to my wife and my son at the moment, I would be in such a much worse situation, but I can. So I have a son who's 13 years old here. He's very used to being in Singapore because he's grown up here since he was two years old. But obviously he's not used to the situation where his mother and his father are just you know, randomly taken away one day. Um, it makes a huge difference that we're able to talk on WhatsApp. You know, we're able to go several times a day on a group, uh, chat with him. And although he's nearly 14 now, um, you know, for years we used to sing him to bed to sleep every night. Um, and so I've been doing that with him every evening as a kind of a comfort thing, as a kind of reminder that I'm still his dad. I lost my father about three months ago and curiously you know his his world went from six months previous to that he'd been out in his garden enjoying life again out in the green world outside and then his world shrunk to his house his home and then it shrunk to his room and then finally it shrunk to his bed in in the nursing home where he died and so what I learned about myself kind of having my world shrunk down to this isolation ward was I was thinking wow actually this is all that we take with us. You know, this, the only thing that we take with us is love. And the only thing that we leave behind is love. Absolutely nothing else matters. Mm -hmm.